only have more and more mouths to feed. The specimen Macrobrachium may be our best answer. It matures in only nine months. We and other organizations are trying to maintain the specimen Macrobrachium under controlled conditions. Hi. I was afraid you weren't going to make it. Oh, I had to stop and pick up some more film. And of course, I had forgotten what a long ride it is here in the mainland. Hey, what is this? Your answer to world hunger? Don't laugh. It may be. Part of it, anyway, if we're lucky. Come on, I'll introduce you to the great McNeil. Oh, well, what does he think of the idea? Well, I only had a chance to mention it to him once, but he's terrific. He'll go along. Okay, great. We can unlock the secret of the rapid growth of the macro rocking. Perhaps we can use it to speed up the growth of other species of crabs. Paragraph. Yes, Lynn. Dr. McNeil, this is my friend Jan Raines. Hi. Hi, Jan. Very glad to meet you. Hello. Yes. Jan's a photojournalist I told you about. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Um, what I'd like to do, with your permission, of course, is an article on you and your research. Oh, well, that's very nice. Why us? Well, I've been commissioned to do an article on world hunger. So when Lynn told me about your work here... You found crabs too interesting to resist. <laughs> no, it's just that uh, you people are doing something positive about some of our problems today. Young lady, if you think flattery will get you anywhere, you're right. <laughs> Great. Well, then I can do the story? Yes, uh, on one condition. What's that? Well, I'd like to have final approval of your material. You see, we're dependent here on various philanthropic and government agencies for our financing. I understand. It's a deal. Photographically, I don't know how interesting our lab will be, but we'll cooperate in any way we can. Jan, say hello to Pete Adams. I think he's after my job. Hi, how you doing? Hi. Jan Raines. How are you? Uh, Jan's doing a story here about our research. You wouldn't mind her looking over your shoulder for a while, would you? Uh-uh. I don't mind at all. Uh, look, I got one of those impossible schedules today. So why don't you and Lynn brief Jan about the work we're doing? Show her around the facilities and all that. Give me a ring in the morning, will you? Great. We'll we'll work out a, a, a time to talk. Okay. All right? Thank Great. you very much, Dr. McNeil. So, Pete, do you want to uh, start with the tanks outside? Yeah, you go ahead. I have some work here I have to finish up with, but I'll catch up with you later. Okay. All right? company emphasizes is still preliminary, has turned up evidence of at least two other mechanical failures which officials say could have been related. One of them, a steam line relief valve that was stuck in the closed position, and the other, an improperly welded pipe support that was found within four feet of the spot where the steam line broke open. Company officials at first refused to be interviewed on camera. Help yourself about to some coffee. Morning, Ken, this is Jan Rain. Hi. Ago, How are you doing? Hi, thanks. How's the coffee? Oh, well, not bad. Would you like coffee? About the accident at the nuclear power plant this morning, Diana Gonzalez has a live eye report. At 6 this morning, a full alert went into effect here at the power plant. All indications were that a nuclear accident had taken place. However, company officials assure us that it was a false alarm. With us is Fred Quinby, a company representative. Mr. Quinby, can you tell us exactly what happened this morning? Yes, uh, the malfunction was a minor mechanical problem. One of the gauges that monitors the reactor failed. And it did not present a hazard to anyone. And although what actually happened was insignificant, uh, it helped demonstrate that both personnel and fail-safe devices built into the system performed flawlessly. Thank you, Mr. Quinby. I'm Diana Gonzalez, reporting live from the power plant. Today's series of mechanical yeah. failures, which began at 5 a.m., mm -hmm. marked Ready? the fourth time sure. in the last six months that the power plant has See you. shut down for the repair of damage. Okay, now this is where it all begins. The seawater is pumped from the bay into these tanks, and the sediment and larger particles settle to the bottom. And then the clean salt water is pumped into the tanks inside where we conduct our experiments. Now, these are the holding tanks for all the crabs we'll be using later. Hmm. How long do crabs live? Nobody really knows, but we've found crabs on the Andros Islands that are about to be about 20 years old. And most crustaceans like these reach maturity in four to eight years. But under controlled farming methods, we have been able to reduce that period to two years, in some cases. So you get more protein faster, right? Yeah, exactly right. How's that done? 
Really, the fact of the matter is, it's just warm water. It's water warmer than the environment around it. And we found that fish and crustaceans living in the rivers adjacent to factories and power plants were maturing much faster than normal. Yeah, and the reason for that is that the water that is discharged from the factories is heated. Otherwise, it wouldn't have this effect on the shrimp and crabs. What we have done is duplicate that process in the laboratory, and it works. Uh, have you gotten any cooperation from the plant here on this island? What, are you kidding? That plant could easily destroy marine life simply by neglecting to tell us that they accidentally discharge contaminants. There are no contaminants in those discharges. And what makes you so sure of that? My father works there. Failures which caused this morning's shutdown at the nuclear power plant may be more serious than first reported. Federal investigators who started a full-scale inspection of the plant just hours ago now say that at least 46,000 gallons of radioactive water was spilled onto the floor of the reactor building when a main steam line burst shortly before dawn. Huh? One highly placed official source... Thanks. How's my girl? Fine. How are you? <sighs> Pushed. Me too. Busy? Very. I was over at the marine lab on the island all day. I started working on an article on some of the research they're doing over there. Oh, Marguerite. Oh, Marguerite. Um, how about right over there? Okay. Oh, thanks. Ooh, this looks great. Of course it looks great. I made it. Now, you eat every bit. You'll need all your strength now that you've found a new young man. What young man? A young man, Mr. Raines? Well, I guess Jan will have to tell you about that. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Marguerite. <laughs> what young man? He's a teaching assistant in marine science. And his name's Pete Adams. Adams? Pete Adams? Yeah. Do you know him? No. No, you just make him sound pretty good. <laughs> well, don't worry, Dad. He's no threat to you. <laughs> so, uh, how was your day? Well, I guess you heard what happened. Yeah. Was there any real danger? None. Of course, when an alert happens, we never know until enough data comes in to make an evaluation. Well, then a real disaster could occur. Well, I don't think we have to worry about that. We've got the best minds, the most sophisticated equipment, and I've got great confidence in the technology behind our security systems. Dad. You sound like you're still talking to reporters at a press conference. <laughs> I guess I do with that. I'm sorry. Look, is there any possibility that the water from the plant might cause some kind of harmful consequences in the future? No, not a chance. But just suppose that our science and technology aren't as advanced as we like to think they are. Well, sweetheart, do you think I'd risk you or anyone living around here? No. Finish your dinner. <laughs> okay. Professor, hey, Pete, when are you going to vent away for me to catch more fish? What, do you want to be, a millionaire? Yeah, just for one day. <laughs> oh, you get out of here, you damn much. Sam, where you go home? Just 
Did you leave any food out for him? He just scoffed up a bunch of Quasars. Yeah, I fed him his purpose. <laughs> You ready for the big time? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, make a deal. My speed against your Sebastian. Are you kidding? <laughs> 50 bucks. You're on. <laughs> Charlie, you're the talk goal. Two? Come on, give me that money. Sweetheart, where are you? 50 bucks. Okay, listen to me now. This is the big time. And uh, you better win or the old lady's gonna knock the hell out of me. <laughs> Come on. Hey, I'm talking to my fighter. 50 Come bucks. On. Oh, yeah, okay. Ready? Set. On your mark, get set, go! Go, come on, come on! Go, 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 come on, come on! Get... Come on, man. Move, move. <laughs> so I messed up. Come on, come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Yeah, he's sleeping. <laughs> You're just in time for some oysters, Hanson. You want some conch chow, Rosie? You may just have made a big batch out there. That sounds good. Maybe later. Any mail? Yeah, it just looked like junk to me. I don't know. Well, you don't suppose that junk man might have put some money in it by accident, do you? You need money, honey? Well, I might need a little extra in the future. How come? Travel with some pretty fast company today. <laughs> Is that pretty fast or fast and pretty? <laughs> Could be both. <laughs> hey, Amos. Still playing with yourself? Hey, <laughs> Two beers, please. Tommy, what's new, Charlie? Oh, you missed a good crab race. Where? Corey lost 50 bucks. Honest to God. <laughs> How about you? You catch any fish? I got a couple of boxes. Yeah, I like day. a big head on mine. I know you do, Jim. Oh, they look great. Tasty as heck. Rosie, you're a sweetheart. Ain't it the truth? They ask if you're pressing you the table. Thanks. So, who's the new girl? She's doing a story on some of our research projects. Her name's Jan Raines. What did you say? Tell her it's me. Frank Rain's girl? You know her? No, I don't know. Of course they don't, but everybody knows about her. Real pretty girl. Oh, yeah. You know her dad works over at the power plant. Her yeah, dad is the damn power plant. Did you hear what happened over there today? Yeah, but it was on the TV. Hmm. Her dad's pretty important, huh? Well, uh, he's very influential. He may not be important at all. No, he's got his finger in just about every pie. <laughs> Big bucks. Mm -hmm. More than a decent man needs is what he's got. You seem to know a lot about him. He should. Your daddy and Moody used to be... Rose, if you'd stop talking long enough to notice them glasses are empty, they might do some business around here. You and daddy used to be what? Yes. Yeah, but Rosie, you I said... I said nothing. Uh, never mind what Rosie said, all right? some things I've got to do. Okay. I'll see you, honey. Okay, Rosie. Bye-bye. I'll see you, Moody. Kid. Yeah? Put some more food out for the dog. Okay. Bye. Thank you, honey. Someday. I don't want to ask some questions about Frank Range. He's a man now. He's grown. Trains his fault. Pete doesn't know his folks. It was an accident. Everybody knows. Now everybody knows the damn well killed him. That's what everybody knows. It's just a damn black Irish talking. It wasn't anybody's fault. Besides, what's past is past. Come on, Moody. Can't you forget it? Why don't you marry me? That's fast, too. 
half size, we could probably not even be speaking by now. Oh, no, I don't know that about that. You still make a hell of a conch chowder. And you got kind of cute buns there. <laughs> no, stop that. Mm -hmm. Why don't you get out there and he'll serve some drinks? Oh, listen, why don't I come over to your place tonight? What do you say? We might find something to do, hmm? You can't keep your hands off me, can you? When you two get through playing grab ass, you think you can get me another beer? Mm. Yeah, sure thing. I'll have one, would you? See you tomorrow, Joe. Come on over to Bo for a drink. Oh, no, no, thanks. I got some plans. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Good night, Joe. Good night, Moody. Would you get up? Oh, uh, time, time to get up. Well, you got to go to bed first. Would you go on home? Uh, get some sleep. I was sleeping. What, what are you so mad at? I'm mad because you scared the hell out of me. That's why I'm mad, Corey. <laughs> you remind me of my wife. You could turn a man to drink. You drank before you ever had a wife, Corey. I was lonely then. Good night. Good night. No the way. Did 
How about some bacon and eggs? Oh, no, no, thank you very much. Moody, I want to talk to you. Pete, I really don't feel a hell of a lot like talking this morning. Oh, I do. Well, you do, do you? Yeah. All right, right. Let's see you do it. You go ahead, you talk. Yesterday, when I told you about Jan Rains, you started to get all bent out of shape when Rosie said something. Now, how come? Well, that's none of your damn business, kid. What do you mean? It's none of my business, Moody. Whoever made you my keeper? Who made me your keeper? Do you know what the hell you're talking? Forget it. Would you just forget it, Pete? No, Moody. I'm not going to forget it. Now, you got to talk to me, Moody. Now! All right, all right, all right. Take it easy. I was going to tell you anyway. When you were just a, a little kid, your father and I were partners together, along with the Rains. We had a, a marine construction business. Well, one night there was a party. You know, it was a big party. It was your mom and dad's second anniversary. And everybody was drinking and having a nice time. Anyway, Rains insisted on driving your mom and dad home, and he drove off the causeway, and he drove into the bay. And your mom and dad was drowned, and... The dirty bastard, the drunken bastard Rains got out. He walked out. Were you at that party, Moody? <sighs> Moody. Peter, I was too drunk to stop him. You understand that I was too drunk? No luck. I figured they're probably on the mainland by now. Yeah, well, the bridge tender said he doesn't remember anybody going to the mainland last night, yeah, but well. he was probably sleeping. Damn, you'd have to be desperate to come all this way in an old tub like that, wouldn't you? Oh, yeah. Nothing, Sheriff. They're gone. Hey, boy. Yeah, more than likely they're at some friend's house having breakfast. Buddy. Oh, that's just exactly what I'm going to do. I'll see you later, Tom. Okay, see you, buddy. Come on, you dirty, rotten dog. That's some kind of trained dog you got there, Moody. Yeah. They're so highly trained, I have to remind them to breathe. <laughs> All right, now look, you want to stay right there, then you stay right there. I'm just going home. Goodbye. If you want to go take care of the boat, and I'll go get the car. <laughs> Increase their speed of growth. Uh, what we want to do is to see if we can also increase their size. Ooh, have you had any luck with that? Well, no. <laughs> but uh, in the Galapagos, just off the coast of Chile, there are volcanic rifts that heat up the water to a much higher temperature than the surrounding cold water, and the results are very large sea creatures. Oh, isn't that where they found those uh, giant sea worms? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right, that's right. We hope for the same results here. As it well, there you go. Lynn's working on that now. Hi, hi. What I'm doing is I'm keeping the crabs in a series of tanks at different temperatures. And hopefully in time, we'll find the optimum temperature to maximize growth. But eventually it might pay off. Well, all right then. 
Uh, I've got to get back to my article. The university likes us to be published. You know. Thank you. You like bikes? I didn't know you like pickups. You coming or going? I have just spent a lovely hour with the good doctor. Nothing serious, I hope. Uh, no. My only problem was the crabs. I'm sorry. In photographing them. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I'll prove it to you at dinner tonight. Eight o'clock. Pretty sure of yourself, aren't you? Actually, I'm scared to death you're going to say no. <laughs> Well, I wouldn't want that to happen. Okay, good. Hey, we could uh, meet Lynn and Chuck at the beach bar. All right. See you at 8 o'clock. 8.30. 2606, Otis. What's up? I've just been attacked. <laughs> You've been what? <laughs> You're serious. Well, take it easy. Take it easy. All right, where are you? Okay. Okay, I'll be there. Yeah. Bye bye. Much for your tires. Jan, crabs just don't attack people. Well, these did. You you said that that they don't come out in the daytime, and they did. You said that they don't migrate this time of year, and they did. So why couldn't they attack me? I'll give you two out of three, but not that. Jan, are you all right? Come here. Come here, sit down. You okay? Yeah, I think so. You sure? The ground just caved in right there. What is that? Some kind of shell. Leave it. 
looks like I owe you an apology. John. John, this is unbelievable. Look at the size of this shell. What do you got there? Let's, uh, let's have a look at this. Let me just get this. This big piece here is the one that goes on the back. This piece right here. That's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It can be done. Dr. McNeil, could this be a result of your research? Maybe. Oh, well, maybe not. It, it may be another crab of the same species that we've never seen before. John, I think we may have done it. All right, all right. Let's not go breaking our arms, patting ourselves on the back. We need proof. This is proof. John, it's happening. Beer? Beer's fine. Leave the lady alone. She knows it. She won't. Hi, Moody. How you doing? I'm all right. You all right? Yes, sir. Moody, I'd like you to meet Jan Raines. No. Heard a lot of nice things about you. What happened to your arm, honey? Um, I had an accident on my bike. Hmm. Well, come with me. I think I got something that'll take care of that. All right. Looks like you should be more careful on a bike, honey. Yeah, I guess so. Boy, uh, Moody's just the way Pete described him. <laughs> He's one of a kind. There's no getting around that. This shouldn't hurt. Seems like a nice girl. Thank you, Moody. Why is everybody so quiet? Oh, Amos got killed last night. What? Yeah, there was a fire. His bus burned down. Well, I got her all fixed up. Good. Rosie, uh, Moody, we're gonna go. Oh, I'll see you, honey. Nice meeting you, Jane. Sure. I'll see you later, right? Nice Bye -bye. to meet you both. Bye. You told him, didn't you? Yeah. So I said, well, thank you very much, officer. I started it up, I put her in gear, and I backed right into the police car. Wow! <laughs> da -da 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 Champagne! Well, only the best for the best. What's your cake, Chuck? Oh, you'll see. There's some for you, my dear. Thank you. Easy on Lynn. And for you. <laughs> Heavy on Jan. <laughs> and for you, big guy. <laughs> and for me. <laughs> now, I'd like to propose a toast <laughs> to someone very special who's become the most important person in my life. show you and the world how I feel. I hope you'll accept this token of love and the guy who offers it to you. All right. Honey? Oh, uh, maybe two would like to be alone right now. Let's go for a walk. OK. Lynn? Uh, yeah. Tough one. 
Did you have any idea that was going to happen? No. Did you? No. Why didn't you just wait until they were alone? I don't know. <laughs> I pull some dumb stunts like that myself. Chuck! Chuck, wait a minute. Look, I'm really sorry. I don't know what to say. I'm very flattered, but I just don't know... Wonderful. Look, I'm sorry if I gave you the wrong impression. Well, you know, now's a great time to tell me. You sure did a turnaround, Chuck. Cecilia. I don't give a damn what they think. I think I'd better leave. No, wait. Can we talk about it? Please. I don't want to talk here. Let's go for a ride. Okay. Spend years in school. You think you got a pretty good grasp on things. And then something like that shell pops up. Makes you realize how little you do know. I thought we had a lot in common. We do. I like you a lot. But you don't love me. Do you? No, I don't. I don't want to get married yet. I've got too many things I want to do. Can you understand that? I'd like to be alone for a while. Okay, I'll take you back. No, no, I'm gonna walk. I, I, I need some time to think. Are you sure? It's a long way back. I don't like leaving you alone. No, it's just what I need. I'll be all right, really. I know my way back. Okay. I'll be waiting for you. Thank you. Soda, Doug.
have any idea what happened to her. We heard her screaming like crazy out in the woods, and by the time we got to her, she'd already passed out. Is she gonna be okay? Well, we don't know about the arm. It's got uh, I'm pretty badly mutilated, maybe half a dozen lacerations down to the bone, uh, compound fractures. She lost a lot of blood. When can we see her? Well, she did regain consciousness once, but she was incoherent. Did she say anything? Yeah, yeah, she kept saying something about a crab, but it, it didn't make any sense. We're doing some research on crabs. Oh, uh, yeah, that explain it. Look, she's gonna be under for quite a while. There's really nothing you can do here. Why don't you go home and take it easy, and if you like, check with me, say, um, you know, 12 o'clock. Okay. Engine. We're still fighting about that, I think. Yeah, I got a gnissing trouble now. I didn't sleep at all last night. I just couldn't get Amos off my mind. Yeah, I know what you mean. We'll miss him. When is the funeral? The funeral's Monday at 3 o'clock. Sure is hard to believe. What do you think really happened? What does it mean, really happened? I suppose it's like the fire marshal said he knocked over a lamp or something. Come on, that doesn't explain why the bus was turned over on its side. <sighs> well, maybe the heat buckled it. What do you have in there to burn like that? It takes a lot of heat to do that to a bus. Now, there's something funny about this. Joe, you're, you're making too much of something like this. There's nothing. I don't know. Do you, do you think somebody could have set that fire? Maybe. Well, now, who would do a terrible thing like that? I don't know. What about that boat? What boat? The one they found on the beach. Oh, Dad, no, no. No, I talked to the sheriff about that. He said there wasn't anybody around there. Huh? They said they didn't find anybody there. Well, that don't mean they ain't around here somewhere. I bet you some more of them Haitians. Well, what if they are? So what? Well, they found the boat the morning Amos was killed, didn't they? Oh, that's a big damn clue, isn't it? That don't prove nothing. Oh, yeah? I read about them Haitians. Do you know what they do with that voodoo crap? Uh, yeah, sure I know. All right, what do you want me to do about it? Call the sheriff? The sheriff? That's a laugh. He wouldn't know a Haitian if he bit him in the well, ass. what do you want me to do about it? Don't worry, I'll think of something. Don't do me a favor, will you, Joe? Don't think of something. time last night. Well, I didn't. Not really. Why? You know Lynn? No, yeah, sure. The girl who works in the, in the lab. Something attacked her last night, Moody. It tore up her arm to shreds. She's still unconscious. What the hell do you mean, something? I don't know. Where did this happen? It was out past Amos, out in the woods. Oh, there's something funny going on. Yeah. Listen, Pete, what do you know about Haitians? You know that voodoo stuff they do? Do you know anything about that?
damn fool! You rotten thief! You could have killed me, Joe! You see, I told you. you. Put that damn thing away and wrap it around your neck. Moody, you're so patient. You put it away, Joe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? It's all right, it's all right. Come on, everybody, let's go on in back and have a good time. Yes, I'll plan for my to do. You damn sure I like to share too. <laughs> crab is constantly growing inside of the shell. When it molts its shell, the outer skin, which has been wrinkled up like a prune inside, starts to absorb water, and then it hardens into a new shell, and then this whole process starts all over again. What I'm doing is injecting various formulas of growth hormone into the crab, and then this is supposed to override the breaking system, which is the one that eventually stops the growth of the crab. Where do you get growth hormones? We create it, right here in the lab. You mean you're working with DNA and gene splicing? Mm -hmm. That's really risky. No more so than nuclear power. Yeah, these pictures are really good. Thank you. Marine lab, speaking. Oh, yes. She all right? Yes, we will. That was the hospital. They want us there. What the hell have you been doing?
get the damn door closed. Get it closed. Moody. He's dead. Haitians, Moody. It was them Haitians who done it. Get some lights. Guns. We're gonna get them. Meet back here. Come on, you. Come on with me. Conscious in an hour. We wanted someone here. We couldn't save the arm. Have you heard from her parents yet? Oh, yeah. Now, they won't be in until tonight. That's why we called you. We'll wait until they come. Good. Doctor, right before you operated, did she make any mention of the crabs again? Yes, she did. She, she mumbled something about them, you know. Okay. Can you remember if she said crab or crabs? Sorry, I can't. Uh, thanks, Doctor. Thank you. A crab that's as big as the one that we found would have a claw two feet long. A claw that size could do a lot of damage. Yeah, it already has. Well, you know what we have to do? We've got to find it. We've got to stop it. How? With a, a trap? Maybe. It'd have to be real strong, no, though. We don't have anything that big at the lab. It'd take time to build one. How about a net, John? I can get one. Yeah, that... Well, that might... might do it. It's funny.
you, John. I'm gonna check this out. Is gone after the Haitians. Give me the flashlight, will you? You think they're still around? I don't know, but I better get out there before somebody gets hurt. Be careful here. Please. We mean you no harm. You must help Who us. Who are you? There's a little girl, Colette. She is very sick. You must help us. What's the matter with her? She's been unconscious for a day. Where is she? Follow me, please. All right, go ahead. Let's get her to my place. We can telephone for the doctor. Sure. Gade! Gade! Presse! Me! Move no alley, Cunha! Not that way! Come here! Come, come, come!
Panamá. Keep on the way. It's right around here. Oh my God. It's my house. On the other side, help me lift this tent. Hey. Yeah. All right, sir. Wait a minute, Moody. Oh. Moody, something big hit the house. It came through the roof. It almost killed us. It almost killed us. Listen, we got a sick little girl over there. We need to get to a telephone. Come on. Waste of damn time walking around in circles. Yeah, hey, I should have known better. <laughs> Wait, you guys, I know they're out there somewhere. Come on, we're not getting anywhere. Listen, have you forgotten what they've done? They killed Amos. They killed Trouble. They might have been here yesterday, but they're gone now. Yeah, we look. Well, what the hell is Listen to me. Beer. Hey, yeah, Beard, how you talking? <laughs> I know they're out there somewhere. So yeah, don't worry about it. If they're out there, let's, we'll find them tomorrow. Don't worry. Who cares? Let's get some damn beer. <laughs> yeah. Did you get him? Phone's out. We gotta get her to the hospital. What the hell's going on here? Get back. Mm -hmm. I told you they were around here. Put that damn thing away. Nobody killed that. Joe, Joe, listen to me. This girl's sick. She's gonna die. We've got to get her to a hospital. The bridge is out. We gotta get her across to the mainland. Garner, what about your boat? We'll use my boat. No, no, we might need you. Hey, we'll go down. Pick her up. Let's just be careful now, would you? Come on.
the cable. Get in the soft part of the joint. We gotta get his arm fully extended for that. Right. He's hanging. I'm going with you, Moody. All right, Charlie. Get a couple of them lanterns over there. You ready? Yes, sir. Give me that. 
What are you doing? That poison. It's okay, nothing there. Thank you. 